Hey everyone, welcome to lesson three, where we're going to be talking about the U.S. banking system. Now, in the last lesson, we had explored money and credit and talked about how anything can be money and anyone can issue credit or promises to deliver something of value. And the most prevalent form now is credit issued by banks or promises issued by banks in the form of numbers in a bank account and that we treat that as money today. And in that evolution, we had gone through how money at one time was gold and how it evolved to the bank credit. And as that was able to support the economy and the growing dynamism, we also needed a shift in our banking system to adjust for that change in money. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So historically, as we talked about last time, we have our three friends, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. They would each earn gold for their production, and they would deposit the, that gold in an entity called a bank, which would hold it for safekeeping. And then those banks would issue certificates to each individual. And then the individuals could trade that certificate, and it would be much more convenient instead of trading the physical gold. Now, let's look at an example of what happens with Alice and Bob. They each have certificates from Bank One, where they bank. And if Alice is getting a little hungry, she may pay Bob one of these certificates, each representing one of the gold bars that she has deposited. And Bob would give Alice some bread. Great. This is an easy transaction and really ideal because on the bank side, they don't have to do anything. Bob now has an extra certificate, which he knows can claim him one more gold bar from the bank. And this is great. Now, let's imagine, however, a similar transaction between Bob and Charlie. Now Charlie is getting pretty hungry and he has his certificates from bank two. And he says, Bob, here's a certificate from my bank too. And I would like some bread, please. So now Charlie can eat and he's happy. But there are some issues here because Bob trusts his own bank where he deposits his, his gold. But he doesn't necessarily trust bank two where Charlie has deposited his gold. He doesn't know if these bank two owners are fraudsters, perhaps they're issuing these IOUs, these bank notes uh, in excess of what gold has been deposited. And so he doesn't really trust bank two. And maybe he's not willing to accept these bank two certificates, which would mean that's a problem because money has to be widely accepted. And now Charlie would be starving even though he has the gold in the vault. So this is a problem right, with this full reserve banking system. Now, there's another problem as well, which is even if Bob does accept Bank 2 certificates, perhaps Charlie is living in a different state. So that means that Bob has to go and drive his car or find another means of transportation, walk up to Bank 2 and say, hey, I have one of your certificates. Uh, give me my gold bar now, please and I'll go and drive back to my bank and deposit it and get a bank one certificate, it's a very big hassle. And trade would not be able to occur very easily this way across far distances. And if Bob didn't want to drive himself, maybe he would call up bank one, his own bank, and say, hey, can you call the bank two guys? I have a certificate from them. They owe me a gold bar. So can, can you uh, have them send it over? And you know, bank one would then dial bank two and tell them, hey, one of my customers uh, says you, you owe him a gold bar. And bank two would say, yep, it looks like uh, Charlie had given it to him for some bread and uh, let me send it over in an armored vehicle, right? And, uh, and then this would be a big hassle because th this is very expensive moving a bunch of gold and armored vehicles just for a simple transaction. 
And who knows if there were thieves in the middle of the mountain waiting to jump out and steal all this gold, right, from, from the, uh, the armored vehicle. So there were some issues here. And as money evolved and we became based on the numbers system, where we have numbers and accounts and we got rid of all this paper and gold, we eventually moved to the modern banking system, which is a fractional reserve banking system. So here, full reserve just means every money, paper, is backed one for one with gold, the physical asset. Now, the Federal Reserve is really what we call a bank's bank. We're trying to mimic what Alice and Bob experienced here with their bank one, where they were able to transact freely and without issues all because they were all trading with the same uniform currency and all within the same bank, so it was very easy to move. In reality, the Federal Reserve banks are 12 banks, but for our simplistic purposes, we're just gonna consider it as one entity. And instead of the gold, we've replaced that with digital reserves, which are equivalent to certificates or digital IOUs issued to each of the banks. So the banks now hold an account with the Fed and any transaction where gold would have moved previously is now just shifted in reserves at the Fed. So now for this similar transaction, if we were look, to look at it again, when Bob gives Charlie some bread so he can eat and Charlie pays for it with one of these notes from his own bank, all that happens is that Bank one just calls on bank two to move the reserve at the Fed, which is all digital. All right, so this reserve comes there now, and it's owned by bank one. And this is much more easy and convenient to move than moving a bunch of gold. It's also trusted because now we have a uniform number in our banking accounts so that Bob doesn't have to worry about numbers in bank two and Charlie's bank being any different from his own. All that happens is the numbers in, bank, in Charlie's bank go down and the numbers in Bob's bank account go up. So now with this system, we have a trusted system that is convenient and uniform. And so this system has now evolved to support a larger and growing economy. That's it for today and I'll see you in the next lesson.